We are seeing coronal holes north and south. We can only hope that the larger earthquakes have settled down and released all their pressure. Good morning, folks. Our hope was for not a 6.7 magnitude earthquake struck in the South Atlantic. Readings matched pretty well, but it was a downgrade fest at the USGS yesterday, eventually coming down to a 6.2, the lowest end of the scale. Then, a double event in Japan, 6.9 and 6.9. Initial readings bulge at the top of the minute, and then another 30 seconds later, then the USGS dropped one of them to 6.8 and decided it happened slightly west of the first location. Full readings list expanded to show multiple 7 magnitude readings and lots more at 6.9, but the USGS downgraded to only one quake event at 6.7, also cutting down to 5.8, a tremor that hit magnitude 6 on multiple readers. Although no tsunami was produced, the Japan quake did trip the local buoys a few inches, nothing major. The coronal holes begin departing today, but we may yet see some increased seismicity remaining. Primary eruption threats are diminishing as the filaments are either turning away, losing coronal altitude, or slipping back down into the sun. Other than that, no eruptions, no solar flares, nothing at all. All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. Sleep sweet, sunshine. Just one sunspot group, departing the disk, and still just big negative twins without magnetic mixing. The solar wind for three days here shows a strong density shockwave yesterday afternoon, leading to a small speed rise this morning. Could be the start of a coronal hole effect. The electrons taking a beating upon the increased pressure. The magnetic systems of Earth are becoming energized with solar plasma, but as of yet, our shield is holding it together. That's something to watch today. Top two links today. First is to a mysterious Mars plume into its upper atmosphere. Turns out it's one of many, considering that they believe these may relate to the sparse magnetic field of Mars. Perhaps this is a Mars spot effect. Discussion is warranted. Second, yesterday's second video to YouTube was called Comet Lovejoy Hit with Solar Eruptions. This would be C-2014Q2. And there's evidence of massive solar-induced ion disruption at the comet and in the tail. This is one of the best examples of the effect that humans have ever been able to analyze. Meanwhile, we're still looking around Australia to see multiple low-pressure systems with the one due north being cyclonic and developing fast. Penumbral cloud lines are popping set to head west now. We also have a convergence line in the southeastern part of the country that watches east and west collide to add to the purple precipitation alerts tonight. Top stories at weather.com are all about the bad winter storms. Deaths are being reported across the region's hit and it's still an incredibly dangerous system. The primary low is at the coastline so the eastern warm-up on the convergence is over and it's just the cold arctic air funneling down now. Snow with a slight chance of more snow, changing to snow by the overnight hours with more snow in the morning. In Europe, let's notice the Atlantic flows meeting air arriving from the east and a convergence being created north and south, while the low in the Mediterranean remains as well. Cloud lines show that longitudinal convergence and the spin to the south. We've got the current conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.35 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.